Hello, this is Dr. Alex Truesdell from uh, uh, Virginia Heart and the Inova Heart and Vascular Institute. And it is my uh, pleasure today to discuss bypass graft and angiography and intervention from the radial artery approach. What I intend to cover today is why the uh, radial artery access is the preferred um, mode of angiography and intervention, how post-cabbage patients are different. I'm going to discuss some tools, techniques, and equipment that are unique to uh, radial artery access uh, and uh, intervention in the post-bypass patient. Of course, we'll emphasize uh, safety first, and I'd like to review a few case examples to bring the uh, points home. So I think first it's worth mentioning that when you think about post-cardiac bypass uh, patients, they're generally older and have greater comorbidities, and also more frequently are chronically anticoagulated. Vein grafts are the most common uh, bypass conduit still across the world and have very high failure rates. When you look at percutaneous coronary intervention, coronary intervention to bypass grafts is still fairly common. And yet, although these are the highest risk um, patients, these are the patients least likely to enjoy the benefits of the lower uh, vascular access complications and the other downstream positive effects of uh, transradial percutaneous coronary intervention. Again, when we look at uh, percutaneous coronary intervention to saphenous vein grafts, overall, these interventions have less uh, uh, good outcomes compared to natal vessel, native vessel intervention. And people typically think that because of the complexity of the intervention, that perhaps we should um, pursue femoral access. But this is not an accurate um, perception. And really, the increased complexity does not preclude radial access, and in fact, these higher risk patients are the exact ones that have the most to gain, the ones that stand the most to benefit from radial artery access. And really, we should place a premium on transradial uh, access in this population, more so uh, even, I would say, than the lower risk patients. Overall, when we compare radial versus femoral approach for post-bypass interventions for both IMA, uh, native vessels, and uh, bypass grafts, there are multiple studies in the past years that demonstrate that fluoroscopy time is comparable between the two access sites. And in fact, some show that fewer catheters are utilized with radial access, or at least no more catheters, and at least lower contrast volume, or at least the same. And I think certainly the idea that uh, radial access adds time or complexity to the procedure has been pretty well disproven. What is also very clear is that there are lower rates of vascular access site bleeding complications with radial access and the downstream effects that come from that. And also there's a much higher likelihood of same day discharge with radial access. There's a nice um, paper looking at the 2005 to 2014 change in the United Kingdom, which shows that there's uh, increasing use of radial access for post bypass interventions but still with greater than 50% femoral access as of 2014, a lot of opportunity for improvement. And these uh, numbers are even uh, lower in the United States. So I wanna start with some setup tips and tricks. So in general, most people prefer the right radial artery for non-cabbage percutaneous coronary intervention. But I would suggest, and most people would as well, that the left radial artery is preferred post bypass primarily because of the left uh, IMA graft. Overall, if you want to be successful, both for yourself and for your patient, you really have to focus on maximizing both patient comfort and your own ergonomics. And some ways to do that is to elevate the patient arm, retract the uh, arm across the patient's body, perhaps turn the patient slightly to the uh, LAO direction. And also more recently, there's left distal radial artery, also known as snuff box, access as a new option, which also makes for a much more ergonomic and back-friendly approach for the interventional cardiologist. Overall, everything that I've discussed and is demonstrated in the pictures that you can see is designed to create a femoral-like access site position and location so that the patient is comfortable and you're comfortable so you can proceed in a uh, thoughtful, careful, and safe manner um, that is also comfortable for the operator. One question that comes up a lot is <clears throat> which catheters? So in general, we're focused on support, um, either from the aortic sinus or the opposite aortic wall, 
And sometimes due to unique graft positions, this may be challenging. The left radial artery, as I mentioned, permits uh, lima cannulation and is also probably a more familiar approach to the grafts for people who have uh, had comfort with the ephemeral artery approach. Uh, in cases of right radial artery, um, or sorry, in, uh, the right radial artery is preferred in cases where patients have a bilateral IMA graft, and I'll show an example of that later on in the presentation. In general, what I would say the most important thing is that the catheters that you used are primarily the same as you would use for femoral artery access. So for the vein graft, we're talking about multipurpose catheters, Judkin's right, Amplatt's left, right coronary bypass, left coronary bypass, and hockey stick. And then for the internal mammary artery, either an IM catheter, um, a Bartarelli Cosi, or a 3DRC. And there's a nice graphic here that you can look for some of the nuances of where the different grafts are and the takeoff, how you could modify which catheter selection. But again, the major takeaway message is this does not substantively differ than um, the catheter selection that you would utilize from femoral artery access. So I mentioned uh, before the uh, uh, the uh, option of approaching the left internal mammary artery via right radial artery access. And the times where this may be utilized is either patient has a bilateral internal mammary artery uh, graft, or they've had their left radial artery harvested as a uh, bypass conduit. In this case, the first step is to approach from right radial artery access um, and engage the uh, aortic arch with the uh, JL4 or a TIG catheter and direct the catheter tip up into the left subclavian artery. Um, after that, um, you can direct a soft tip stiff shaft 0.035 inch wire through the subclavian artery down into the left brachial radial artery. And at this point, I will ask the patient to bend his or her elbow. Essentially, I would say, make a muscle, and this is designed to trap the wire in the patient's own elbow. The purpose of this is that this trapped wire provides a stiff rail to then deliver the internal mammary catheter from the right radial artery to the left IMA over that trapped wire, which provides a stiff rail. And here you can now see that the internal mammary uh, catheter which is coming from the right radial artery access site has now been advanced over that uh, wire rail to the left internal mammary artery and angiography uh, in a selective fashion can be performed. So here's a case of a, uh, a patient with a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction that arrives to the cath lab anticoagulated. The patient is obese and interestingly um, had already suffered a, a prior femoral vascular access complication. So this is precisely the sort of patient where really you would want to uh, maintain radial artery access for both angiography and intervention. And the angiogram demonstrated an ulcerated lesion in the uh, mid-body portion of the uh, vein graft to the ramus. Uh, and again, this is performed from right radial artery access with the uh, use of a JR4 diagnostic catheter. So then transitioning to intervention, Again, through the same right radial artery access, the uh, diagnostic catheter was uh, switched for a six French hockey stick guide. A workhorse coronary wire was advanced down the uh, vein graft and an embolic protection device delivered distal to the uh, lesion. As well um, as embolic protection, I strongly advocate use of adjunctive pharmacologic um, uh, protection for uh, no reflow and slow reflow. In this case, I used intracoronary nicardipine. Uh, the patient was uh, stented with a, uh, a large diameter stent. The embolic protection device was removed. And here you can see the sequence of events and the uh, final angiographic result post uh, stenting. Again, a uh, very quick and easy um, case, good support from the radial artery and uh, realizing all of the uh, uh, bleeding uh, prevention and vascular access site complication benefits of radial access. Uh, another useful uh, tip is to use guide catheter extenders. I use these very frequently, and it's a really important tool in the armamentarium for radial artery access. And where it can become very useful is if you're having difficulty selectively engaging the uh, vein graft with your guide, you can engage subselectively, and then what's called airmail 
the coronary wire, which essentially is advance a coronary um, 0.014 inch wire into the vein graft via subselective guide. And thereafter, advance a guide catheter extender um, over the wire into the vein graft through your guide. So now you have um, a you've got very good support and you can then pursue deep intubation um, and get good deep seating of both the guide catheter extender and the guide. And really this is a nice way to achieve support. And you can see a couple examples here um, pictured where these are graphs that might otherwise not have been so easily engaged without the use of either deep intubation or a, a mother and child guide catheter extender approach. Here's a case example. This is a, a patient with uh, progressive exertional angina that had actually had an unsuccessful uh, attempt at femoral percutaneous coronary intervention and was referred for a, a reattempt. And in this case, I pursued right radial artery access with a six French multipurpose uh, guide. And again, this highlights that uh, this is not um, an issue of radial versus femoral access uh, in terms of guide support, meaning that I was able to obtain superior guide support via the radial artery than another operator was able to do via the femoral artery. So in this case, um, as I mentioned before about the guide catheter extender, I deeply intubated through the entire graft down into the native right coronary artery and use that uh, guide catheter extender to then deliver a stent distally, unsheath the stent, perform intravascular ultrasound. And um, ultimately you can see the uh, final uh, pictures of uh, stenting and final angiographic result where I was able to maintain excellent support, maintain radial artery access, and again, provide all the benefits that accrue from uh, radial access. And the patient was able to be discharged same day, which is also a much more frequent event with uh, radial artery access. So one thing that always needs to be mentioned with uh, vein graft intervention is that uh, the vein grafts certainly have very high rates of degeneration. And the very recent DIVA study was interesting in that it was designed to compare head-to-head -head bare metal stent versus drug eluting stent. But my major takeaway from the study is that regardless of the stent used, vein graft intervention carries a very high rate of uh, failure and uh, revascularization, uh, repeat revascularization at one year. So it's also important if you're looking at intervening on a vein graft, think ahead and consider preferential native vessel percutaneous coronary intervention either at that time or in a delayed fashion in the uh, future. So in conclusion, radial artery access demonstrates unequivocally lower rates of vascular access site bleeding and complications and all the follow-on attendant morbidity and mortality benefits that come from that. With practice, there is no increase in fluoroscopy time, no increase in number of catheters utilized, no increase in contrast use with radial artery access compared to femoral artery access. Patient comfort and satisfaction is much better and has been demonstrated repeatedly with radial access, which is frankly very important. And also radial access facilitates default same day discharge uh, process. And that has many economic benefits also associated with it, in addition to the fact that most patients would rather spend the uh, evening of a PCI sleeping in their own bed than in the hospital bed. I'd like to uh, thank the uh, staff of the Inova Heart and Vascular Institute Cardiac Catheterization Labs uh, who participated in all the cases I showed you and have really allowed uh, you know, me to participate in the care of patients on a daily basis. Thank you.